with light and life. He woke us up this morning. He gave us the opportunity to make it from last week to this week. Get food to eat. You're still looking good. You ain't almost like I lost my weight, so you ain't good. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you are watching by Facebook, you're here present with us. YouTube, wherever you may be, welcome to Arches Grove Sunday Service. Gracious Father and all our God, O Holy One, we come together, Father, as your children, magnifying your precious and holy name. For you are the great I Am. The one who is and always will be, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your house. This is not our house, but your house, Lord. The house, Lord, where you nourish us and feed us. You allow the one, Lord, that we call the pastor to give us the nourishment that you have given him. Father, we pray that his, your word that you have given him this day to fall upon good soul, Lord, that it shall be rooted, shall spring up. You shall nourish it, Lord, and we shall abide in it, Lord. Yeah. And not only shall we be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. Yeah. For Father, and send us forth with your word that we may bring others yeah. into your precious kingdom. Yeah. For there is no life better than a life with you. Yeah. For it is great. No matter what comes our way, you say cast our cares upon you, and you'll take care of it. We stay focused on you, and you will keep us in your peace. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you. Glory unto your name. And if we could stand this morning and sing in the doxology with this wonderful choir.
feel in the song, and you talk to somebody else, it's still in the song now. And the Lord has you start praying for them. What you're dealing with, you forget all about it. And the Amen. Lord gives you Amen. peace and Amen. joy. Amen. That was a freak. But God wants that off and around, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, please keep in mind our prayer list. We have Sister Gloria Kirby, Sister Rhonda Taylor, Sister Elizabeth Kirkpatrick, Sister Betty Tenen, Sister Jean Curry, Sister and Brother Skip and Thelma the Grapple, Sister and Brother Floyd and Wapina Burnett, Brother Cornell Austin, Brother and Sister Paul and Janice Moore. Brother Bobby Fullmore. Sister Clarestine Love and George. Brother Gerald Enoch. Brother and Sister Reggie and Ava Roberts. Brother Tony Troxler. Sister Betty Troxler Holman and her son who's in the hospital, and also sister and brother Yvette and Don Slay and Miss Ann. Please keep them in mind during your time throughout the day and the week to keep them in prayer. And anyone else that you may know of, including yourself, do not leave yourself out. Amen. Amen. Because if you can't pray for yourself, you can't pray for others. Amen. We're going to ask. <coughs> oh, let, let, let's give a hand clap. Mayor Choir. We have some musicians. I wish I could have part of y'all's house. Part of all of y'all's house. <laughs> and now we're going to have scripture from. Brother Minister Reverend James Lamont Turner. I called him out like was, I was his mom and dad. And then we're going to ask if he can take or give us a morning prayer. And please remember to pray for the offering. Good morning, church. This morning's scripture is going to come to you from the book of Ecclesiastes. It's funny that it's coming from Ecclesiastes. God said, God is there here for quite some time there. Between Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. So I'm in there. When you find that we please stand for the reverence of the word of God. I'm going to read. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you from Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I'm going to be reading to you from the NIV version this morning. simply titled, Fulfill Your Vow to God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer sacrifice of fools. Who do not know that they are doing wrong? Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. A dream comes when there are many cares and many words mark the speech of a fool. 
when you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vows. It is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And do not protest to the temple messengers. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, fulfill God. Therefore, fear God. Amen? Amen. And God's word <clears throat> has already been blessed. Good morning. 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 My sister said uh, for Women's Day, she tried to get in here by last Sunday, but I was gone. So she said, Mama's Women's Day, in remembrance of Mama, for the women, for Women's Day. So I'd like to add this to the Women's Day money. You trying to rub that in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope, we hope. Amen. Amen. Thank you. To everyone that contributed, has contributed, wanted to contribute to the wonderful Men's and Women's Day of last week. It was wonderful. Did we have some wonderful speakers? Amen. Amen. It's a man's world. I know it's only a man's say yeah. It's our world. It's God's world. We just a part of it. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to have a selection from this magnificent choir. They're going to bless our heart, our minds, our soul, and our spirit. And I want to say welcome to those who came in a little bit late. Glad that you came.
praise in now. I'm sorry, because right. it's not that type of message. Amen. Amen. I got the keys on my desk. Amen. Anybody want to save me now? Go start my car. Amen. <laughs> Lord, we love you because you first loved us. God, we thank you for you've done so much for us. We thank you, God, for being on the throne and being in control. Thank you, God, for everything we are and everything that we are not. Thank you, God, for Jesus Christ and salvation of our sins. Thank you, God, for the power of your Holy Ghost that gives us direction and correction. And then we thank you, God, for one another. God, how you continue to bless us, you continue to keep us. We just thank you. God, again, as been said, remember those who are on our sick and shut-in list, not only the ones who are sick, but the family members, God, we pray that you would give them strength. We ask you, God, to look at the condition of this world, God, and, and just have a little mercy on us. Give us a little more time until we get it right. Then, God, look on your church, for we know in your word it said that judgment begins at your house. So we ask you, God, to look. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, God, when we fall short. But then, God, we thank you when you do pick us back up. Yeah. We're right. able to give your name and praise. Yeah. So I show sure thank you, God, yeah. for this opportunity again to stand behind your sacred desk and preach your word. Yeah. I certainly do not take it lightly, God, but I know that I can't do it unless you stand up at me. Yeah. And then the people can't hear unless you move on them. Yeah. So, God, we ask you that you would grant us this favor one more time that we will be doers and hearers of your word. Yes. Better men, women, and children when we leave this place than when we came. And we be careful to keep your commandments. God, my prayer always is that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, oh God, I pray have been acceptable in your sight. For truly, O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. In Jesus' name I do pray that the faithful of God say amen. amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. Y'all know where I'm going, don't you? Still swinging the axe, amen. amen. Today I'm going to read uh, Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. And then I'm going to read quite a few verses of chapter 5 because I want to make sure that if you're not hearing it, that you read it. Thank you, Deacon Hay, for honoring the custom of the house where if you're able to stand, I'm going to ask you to stand with you. I understand. I do understand. Amen. I might be hurting too. I want to sit down and preach from you to the corners, my sister Jeanette, but for reverence, I'll stand up for you. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter, in it, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Before the ghost has been this to Dr. Luke, and my authorized King James reads thus Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds uh, of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. They distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having laid, sold it, and bought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5, verse 1. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold in possession and kept back part of the proceeds, and his wife also being aware of it, bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said to Ananias, Where has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for your sins? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, 
spirits fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what happened had happened. And Peter said to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last, and the young men came in and found her dead and carried her out, buried her with her husband. Verse 11, so great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to talk to you from the subject, lie and die. Right. Lie Go ahead, pal. and die. Y'all know by now in the book of Acts that Christ has ascended back to the Father. Y'all know that in the book of Acts, great Go miracles ahead. have been performed because the Holy Spirit has fell upon uh, the people of God. And now as they are assembled together at the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes down and the church is formed. After the church has formed great prayer, great togetherness, great assembly, great joy, great things are beginning to happen in the church because God's spirit is moving in the church. And then the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, 38, that men and women and children had begun to get baptized. They repented of their sins. And because this happened, all the people came together. They had all things in common. Acts chapter 3, the evidence that the Holy Ghost was in the house was the fact that the man who usually lay at the front of the temple gate, all of a sudden by the miraculous power of Peter who said in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk, the power fell on this man and he got up jumping, leaping and praising God. When he went inside the house of God, the house of God began to get on fire for God. But then you do know that outside trouble would come. That's why somebody, when God begins to elevate you spiritually, you understand that somebody is going to attack you. That's not evidence that you are failing. That's evidence that God is with you. For if the devil do not attack you, the devil already has you. But when God gets ready to bless you, the devil will try to stand in your way of opposition. Not just from the outside, but from the inside. Now the church is being persecuted, amen, because these men preach Jesus' resurrection. Y'all do know the story I've been telling don't you? That when they began to talk about this, they got arrested. They got arrested and they got interrogated. And when they got interrogated, they still held to the fact that Jesus Christ had resurrected from the dead and by his power, this man who you ought to be celebrating, amen, has become whole. Then in the end of Acts chapter 3, y'all do know it, right? Acts chapter 4, here we go. Again, they assemble together because great miracles are still happening. And people don't like miracles as much as you think they do, amen. Because let me say this to you personally. Some of y'all have been a miracle to other folk and people yeah. saw your life before yeah. God blessed you. Yeah. And they are so glad that God blessed you because they was having a hard time. But because God blessed you, they saw that God was still in the blessing business. But other folk who don't want to change hate the fact that you are a blessing. They hate the fact that you change. They hate the fact that you are going right now. Why? Because they don't want to change. They want to Keep doing that same old man. So they hold an indictment against you. The fact that God is in your life. Back chapter 4. Back chapter 4. They come together and they say that after they got arrested with them. Even though they felt dry. They probably felt uh, 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 you know, like the people had turned. But the fact that God was still with them. Something happened. They said it again. That in the name of Jesus, <laughs> yes, they did. They said it again. When they began to preach the word, Mr. Cook, do you know what happened? The church came together. And what happened was when the Holy Ghost fell the second time, there was a shaking going on. And when the shaking came, the shaking came about again because the Holy Ghost was again in the house. They had somebody. And then a great prayer meeting came together in the church. This is for us as well, but you never see Michael Thompson again. Let me tell you what I got to say it today. That prayer still works. I don't care what you're going through. Prayer still works. At the hospital, prayer still works. At the cemetery, prayer still works. At the corner, prayer still works. Came together and they prayed after the shaking hand. And they was able to do this because the Holy Ghost was in the house. And the Bible says that Peter and John, who had been arrested and told, don't 
and they named any more, the Bible says that they got bold. Lord have mercy if people in the church would get bold. When folk in the church are bold enough to stand up for God, folk will tell you, shh, we will hear all that. We will take all that. Right? And then you have folk that sit like night on a row, and they don't let folk know what God has done for them. I've never seen folk today reaching and taking and grabbing and eating and driving and profiling and still won't give God the play. I don't understand this. You see, the multitude, everybody, a multitude came together in verse 32 of one heart and one soul. And you tell me why I close your ears, children. Two Negroes and two Negroettes can't get along when a multitude can come together. A multitude is hundreds of people, thousands of people. At this time, 20,000 people were in the church. So I just know if y'all tell me, out of 50 folks, how we can't just do a lot. <laughs> Told y'all we don't like me today. I ain't come to play today. One mind, one soul. Neither did anybody say that their possessions belong to them. I love it when God put generous people around me because it teaches me to be generous. Most folk that have blessed me, I realize that they had less than I had. But it was something about their heart that they felt fit to bless me. That's why I love my mama now. We didn't have much, but we always tried to bless somebody. Let me take y'all back to where we used to be. Because this is where we need to go right now. We neighbors with folk that we live right beside, and we don't even know their name. You might wave your hand and speak, but you don't know their name. Back in the day, the neighborhood was just like this. Everybody came together to bless somebody else, and nobody talked about folk who didn't have nothing. Because sometimes you might have this, but you sure ain't got that. And when we come together, everybody ate, everybody dressed, everybody drove, because God was blessing us because we stuck together. So I had somebody, great power, great power came on the apostles. They gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And grace fell on them all. See, I don't care but a few of y'all go ahead and give God the glory. Grace gonna fall on us all. Let me tell you, I told y'all I'm tell I'm warning y'all. I'm spiritually warning y'all this morning. Stop talking about each other. And stop talking about the devil. And stop talking about what's so bad going on. What's good about it? What did God do for you? Did you have to tell somebody how good God has been for you? All week you talk about everybody else. And you ain't saying Jesus yet. But he ain't keep waking you up every day. Great grace fell on the church. After grace fell on the church, they all sold something in there. They saw fit uh, properties that they had, houses that they had, right? Things that they had that maybe, uh, even if they needed or they didn't need it. The text don't say, so I'm not going to speculate. Amen. But all I know is they tried to help somebody else. We live in a world, y'all know it, where they find folk up in the house. They done hoarded so much stuff they can't even get out the house. Say man. And somebody next door probably needs something to eat. Listen, man, how many storage builders do you have down there probably where folk don't even come and check on their stuff? And some folk ain't got a couch in their living room. And folk will put stuff in storage and leave it there and don't even use the stuff they got in their house. Oh, God, have mercy. I thought my mind was up. Great grace came because they came together. And everybody in verse 34 who had stuff, they brought it together, laid it at the apostles' feet, and they distributed it so everybody wouldn't, be in, wouldn't have any need, right? Now, this is Peter and John, or Peter telling you what the church ought to look like, right? But then we know now living in this 21st century, the church don't look like that. So let me take this little bit of time I got and explain to you why it does not look like that. Amen, somebody. So they have a bond. Y'all see it? Verse 36. Who was uh, by 
the apostle's name, uh, it was Joseph was his name. But the apostles named him Barnabas. Now, I was going to talk about Barnabas, but we're going to see Barnabas again. In chapter 9, we're going to see Barnabas. In chapter 11, we're going to see Barnabas when he go and get the apostle Paul, who is sick of church folk, and Paul and went home and sitting on the front porch watching, and God sent Barnabas by to encourage Paul to get in the ministry called, We Need You. So I'm not going to talk about Barnabas, but if y'all see it in the text right there, it said that Barnabas was a, was a son of character. Y'all see it? He was the kind of person that would come up on you and would tell you about all his problems and all his situations. He probably would listen to what you said, try to give you some sound advice, and if he could help you, that brother probably would help you. And then guess what? He'd probably keep it to himself. Yeah. Barnabas. From the country of Cyprus. He sold his land. He said, having a land. Y'all see it? Verse 36. Don't try to walk 37. Don't try to walk with me. Start using your Bible. Start using your electronic. Yes, whatever. Stay in your Bible. Because I can preach Acts all I want to. But if y'all never go back and look at it, y'all not going to learn anything. I'm trying to teach y'all something. I'm hollering at y'all. Y'all want somebody to holler and scratch up. And y'all don't even know what I preached about. I'm going to put something in your head and hope that God will put it in your heart so you can walk in victory. Bones, having land, he sold it, bought the money, laid it at the apostles' feet. Y'all see the thing? They was getting the money, they was bringing it, and laying it at the apostles' feet. Now, let me tell y'all something before I move on, before I get happy if you get the point. There's something called socialism where the government tells everybody, bring in your stuff, and they're equally distributed among people in theory. Then it's communism who does the same thing where you, they have control of all your goods, right, and your services. And they take that and they distribute it amongst the people. Now, history tells me that socialism does not work because you have some that have and some who do not have, right? Communism is the same way. The elites, just like this country, the elites have stuff and the lower end gets the bottom end of the pig. Y'all see what I'm saying? But in this year, y'all see where it's saying nobody lacked anything. Yes. Let me see. Nobody lacked anything. And look, the giving was not coercive. The giving was out the kindness of your heart. So if you had something that you wanted to donate at that time, it was up to you to give it. But once you said you was going to give it, your feet was held to the fire. I don't know who was here when Reverend Lamont read Ecclesiastes chapter 5, but you ought to be very careful what you say, especially in God's heaven, but bestly in God's church. See, God hears you when you make a vow in the church and tell somebody you're going to do something, and then you don't do it, amen. God holds you accountable, so you can try to sing over it and preach over it and pray over it. It's not going to work 10 years later. God still going to remember that you stood up in the house of God talking about what God has done. So you're going to bless everybody else. You don't forget? Yeah. And here it is. Let's go into the lesson. Basically, that, that's pretty much the sermon, but I got to go into the text. Acts chapter 5, y'all there. Bible says, but a certain man named Ananias. Ananias means the Lord is salvation. With Sapphira, his wife, her name means she's a jewel. She's precious, right? And that was his wife. They sold the possession. Uh, and he kept that part of the proceeds. Y'all yeah, see it? His wife also being aware of it and brought it and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now hold on. Let me let me let me clear this up. Now he had the right, you might have just told you, it was not coercion that he bought the thing. But the fact that he stood up and made a vow and said he was gonna give it, and then he kept that part of it. Y'all yeah, see it? So the sin was not that he kept it. That wasn't the sin. The sin was that he lied to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We don't get to it. The sin is that he lied to the Holy Ghost. So he took the full seeds and wife, look, his wife was aware of it. So this was somebody. Don't let your children, don't let your husband, don't let your wife, don't let your boo, don't let your friend, don't let your church member carry you to hell, okay? You got to stand before God for yourself. Bought a certain part, laid it at the apostles' feet. Peter said, Ananias, yes. why has Satan filled your heart yes. to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep that part of the price of the land for yourself? Now let's break this thing, let's, let's, this thing down as we exegete this text. The first
first thing I would tell you in chapter in verse 1 of chapter 5, you see there is a deception. Somebody say deception. They told a lie, right? They say it ain't part. They was going to bring it on, but then they laid a part at the apostles' feet. So there was spiritual deception. There was deception on their part, okay? Now, be careful uh, when you begin to lie. The six things that God hates, seven is detestable unto God. Anybody writing? Anybody thinking? Anybody putting out Proverbs 6? 16 and 19. Go back and look at it when you have time. Six things that God hates. First one is that God hates a lying tongue. Second thing is God hates when somebody shed innocent blood. Three, God hates a heart that devises wickedness. Four, God hates a feet that rush to evil. Five, God hates a false witness. And six, God hates somebody who sows discord among their brother. Somebody who's always causing conflict. Now, out of those six, I want y'all to see something in that. There's something in that. Two times he mentioned lying. Amen. Number one, he said he hates a lying tongue. Y'all see it? Number five, he said he hates a false witness. A false witness ain't nothing but a liar. Proverbs 19 and 7 says false witnesses will be punished. Y'all see it? So there's something about lying that God hates in lying. My mama used to say, she, and she would say it before she asked, who did that? <laughs> Y'all hear me? Who ate that? Because you can go in the kitchen like you do today. You can do stuff like you do today. In the room with grown folk talking. You can do that back in there. Damn. You see, y'all in the new church, y'all don't know nothing about that. Well, let me educate you. When my mama came in and asked you who did this and who did that, you might as well go ahead and confess it. Because if she didn't find out who did it, she going to whoop everybody in the room to make sure that somebody understood what she was talking about. And my mama used to say it like this. My mama said, I hate a lie. Because if you lie, you'll see it. Thank you, God, to me for that discernment. They lied. Not to men, but they lied to God. Leviticus 10. Write that one down. You got time to go to it. Leviticus 10. Go to it when you get a chance. This is Aaron's son. Aaron is the high priest, the brother of Moses. And he's really the only one that can go in to light the fire. Uh, in, in the tabernacle, in the temple. He's the only one that can do that yeah. because he's the high priest. Yeah. But his son, yeah. Adam and Abihu, mm -hmm. they went in and lit some fire unto God. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost wanted to know what was this strange fire. Yeah. You know what happened to them? They died. That's what I'm talking about. They got lying and dying. They died and the Bible died. Why is that significant, Pastor? Because Ananias and Sapphira was the first ones in the church after all the joy, after all the holiness, after all the purity, after all the righteousness, after all the unity, after everything God had done for them, uh, Ananias and Sapphira had the unmitigated goal to bring sin into God's house. Yeah. The Bible says that Satan found a spot in their heart. That's all he got to do. He can do it in your house. He can do it in the church. He can do it on a football team, basketball team. He can do it anywhere. If anybody on that team allowed the devil to come in, he will disrupt the house. Y'all hear me now? It don't take but. First incident. Sin in the church. Look what happened. Just like they died in the Bible in the biggest team. They died. Let me give you another example. Children. Israel crossed over the promised land under Brother Joshua. When they get to the Gilgal, where their sins was rolled away to be circumcised, they're looking over the other side, they're getting ready to go. God gives them a mandate to consecrate yourself. Camp out right here, consecrate yourself before you go over. When you go over, I'm going to allow you to take Jericho, which was built up with a fortified city. No army could take it. Nobody could take it. God said, through me, you're going to take this. He said, but when you take it, the first city belongs to me. Y'all hear me now? They get in, they take the city. 
Man, they ain't aching goals in, so the listen, you know what he saw? He went in the tent, man, they had gold, they had silk, they had all the commodities of that day. Brother Aker said, hey, start raking it in. Took it to his tent, dug a hole, stuck it in the tent. The Spirit of God began to walk around in the tent, walk around the campground. And he wanted to know, why is sin in my camp? Y'all hear me? God knows when sin is in the camp. You can't hide nothing from God because God is omnipotent. That means that God knows every thing. You can't hide from God. So after spiritual uh, the, 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 the discipline or deception, now you have people who are not only deceptive, but you also have discerning men. Now watch me come back and tie it up. So now Achan has stolen. And because he stole a sin has come on the children of Israel, they can't move forward until somebody confessed of that sin and wiped the sin out. Just like a cancer in the body, you can't do nothing until you cut it out. Yeah. 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 Achan died by stoning. Here we are, Ananias, that's about that invited sin into the church. In other words, y'all don't get it. When Peter and John were first started preaching Jesus Christ, persecution came on the church. Persecution came from the outside. This intimidation. That's when folk keep messing with you because they want you to quit. They want you to stop. They can't stop you, but they know if you stop, it's going to mess you up. So they're trying to make you stop. But now look what happened. Look what happened. After they kept going, Peter and John said, let me tell you something. You understand it was Jesus. Y'all got me now? Spiritual deception. Peter stood up and said, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? Peter saw right through them that they had lied to the Holy Ghost. He said, not only have you lied, uh, you have not lied to men, you have lied to God. Y'all with me now? Jesus said that the wheat, Matthew 13, let me give you this one. Matthew 13 said the wheat and the tares, right? What happens is while men are asleep, somebody is sowing some good wheat. But while you sleep, the devil and the enemy is sowing some tares. He's sowing some, some unproductive things in your field. Amen. And Jesus said, let them go together. I will separate. This is what happened here. So now, Ananias and Sapphira, they come and allow the devil to come to church. So this is what happened. The devil was outside the church trying to hurt the church. But he, you know what he did? This is the first time in the text the devil went to church. They write it down in your book. The, 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 the devil went to church. How did he go to church? He went to church because somebody took him to church. So in here today, he in here. So I want to know where this is. Amen. That's my job to find out where he is. Y'all need to find out where he is. Matter of fact, if you ain't looking to make me think it just might be him. Devil goes church. Let me finish up. Because y'all don't like teaching. Y'all like hollering. <laughs> Chapter 5, 1 through 2. You write in your Bible. That's deception. Be careful when deception comes in the house. Verse 3. That's discernment of the Holy Spirit that he gave to the man of God. Peter wasn't in it by himself. The Holy Ghost told him. So if y'all want to figure out what folk around y'all are like, you don't have to go around and ask nobody. You ain't got to Google nobody. You ain't go back and look at their background. You ain't got to do all that. All you got to do is be still and watch God show you who the person is. Next one is after deception. Y'all right? You got discernment. But oh, discipline came to the house. Chapter 5, verse 3. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Peter knew all about it because in Matthew 16, he tried to stop Jesus from going to the cross, and Jesus called him a devil. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. So Peter understood what it was like to be influenced by the devil. Y'all still don't get it. Some of y'all been in church so long, y'all forgot what it's like to be out in the world. That's why folk can trick you on stuff that you used to do. The devil will slide up in the church. You think they saved. They're not saved. They're spiritually saved.
deceiving you, and you up there cracking and praising God and giving God the glory, the devil is still in the jail. Lord, have mercy. Gotta go. Told y'all I'm like it. Persecution came to the church through persistence in the church. Y'all with me now? And because of that, hypocrisy came in the church and lying come in the church. So stop talking about that there are hypocrites in the church. There have always been hypocrites in the church since the day that Ananias and Sapphira lied to the devil to come in the church. Y'all got it? Because the devil was a beautiful soul in Ezekiel chapter 28 until pride was found in his heart. And he was a liar because he lied to all one third of the angels and got them kicked out of hell. Y'all with me now? He's a liar. John 8 said he's the father of lies. Have you ever seen somebody just want to tell a lie just to tell a lie? And then you cut them in the lie. And then they defend the lie and tell another lie. Because you had a bigger lie. And they had to tell them for that lie. Just keep digging and digging and digging until they keep on lying. So they possessed. Kept back part of it. Told a lie to the Holy Ghost. And then they died. Listen to me, it's a point to me and wants to die, then the judgment. I'm done. I got some hope, but I'm done. I just want to give y'all that little tea bit right there to understand that you got to be very careful what you say because you got commentators that say they don't know whether Ananias and Sapphira made it to heaven and they were saved, amen, and they were truly in the church that they went to heaven. I don't know whether they went to heaven or whether they didn't go to heaven. All I know that Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, saying that the fearful and the abominable and the idolaters and all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. And what I'm trying to tell you, stop lying to God and die to yourself. Amen. Rather than lie to God and die because you told a lie. And if you lie and you die, you just might cry. Baby, let me tell you now, you better get yourself right. There ain't no way to get there other than him, Jesus Christ. This is for somebody right here. I close the doors of the church. Not open the doors of the church. I close the doors of the church. Because some folks too busy running out and trying to do what they want to do, rather than laying it down in God's feet, how the eyes of the hall, you just feel like an analysis of fire. Either you all in or you all out. Talk about you clean, you sanctified, you holy, no, you got to be when you tell God that. You can tell Reverend Thompson that. You can tell your neighbor that. But when you talk to God, you better be true to what you say. When you say, I gave this up and I gave that up, baby, you better be the giving it up because God is with you. He walks with you. He talks with you. He's there when nobody else is there. He knows what you're telling him. yourself right. If you've been lying to God, repent. You ain't got to come up here. You ain't got to do none of that. Tell God when you fell short. Stop getting out of bed because I do it. And I had to, and he corrected me this morning because of what I'm preaching. I get out of bed, Mr. Cook, and I'll say something like, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. But I'm lying to myself because I really want to get back in the bed and get another hour of sleep. And I don't feel like getting up. I don't want to eat. I don't want to get dressed. I don't want nobody to call me. I don't want to go nowhere. I ain't getting it. We get up this religious guy. Woke up this morning. I see that baby clapping. You get it, don't you? Woke up this morning. With my mind stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning. With it. And did you really? Because when you get in the presence of God, He knows. I'm done. Be careful, okay? If you're walking with God, continue to walk with Him. He knows when we make a mistake. A righteous man falls seven times. And God picked him up every time. Y'all know Michael Thompson and rewrote that. He could cut it. A righteous man falls. Michael Thompson and fell any time. I can't even count. How many times I fall? And you keep on making a way. So for somebody who's walking in spiritual deception, you're not where God wants you to be. This is the day to get your heart right with God. Get your mind where stop playing church. Because while we walked in here, somebody's in the hospital. Somebody in the funeral home making arrangements for their family. It could have been us, but God had us out. Stop playing church. Spiritual deception. Then there's spiritual discernment. Where God will allow you to 
to see through me. Yeah. You hear me? God would allow you to see through me. Yeah. But he allowed me to see through you. Yeah. Not to beat each other up. Yeah. We in community. We family. We church. We love together. We cry together. We eat together. We fuss together. And then we come back together. Because yeah. we in church. Yeah. We say that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. So be careful. Be careful. Spiritual deception, which is trying to take you. Be spiritually discerning that the Holy Ghost lead you and guide you. And be sure of this, your sin will find you out. You can't play with God. Listen, you can play with me. You can play with each other. You cannot play with the Holy God. You hear me? That's who he is. So as we get ready to leave this place, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Yeah. With the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Ain't it good? Yeah. Come and see about you in the midnight hour. Ooh, yeah. Help you when you mess your marriage up. You step right back in and bless you. Yeah. And if that don't work, you give you something else better. Yeah. Car break down. God might help you figure that you ain't even got no money. God will figure when you get you a whole lot of car. I wish I had somebody who'd be honest with me. Now, credit wasn't no 800. You ride better than most. Because God's still blessing you. Food on your table, clothes on your back. Nobody but God. Five reasons God is good, y'all. I'm gone. Five reasons you already know. So you hear you know. Let me, let me help somebody who don't know. Let me help somebody in the church who just take God for granted. Five reasons you ought to give God the praise. We're going to pray and go home. Number one, he won't get up this morning. Yeah. Number two, he won't get up this morning. Yeah. Number three, he won't get up this morning. Yeah. Number four, he won't get up this morning. Yeah. Y'all yeah, get for five years. What do you do? What do you do? He won't get up this morning. Father, in the matchless mighty name of Jesus, God, we give you glory honor and praise. We thank you, God, that so many times we too have been Ananias and Sapphira who've come in the house, God, and played church games. But God, we thank you that you had grace on us and we didn't lie and we didn't die. We thank you, God, so many times that we came to the communion table. Hearts wasn't right, but like 1 Corinthians 11, we ain't that. Thank you, God, that you continue to give us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you, God, for your love, your mercy, your grace, your peace, your understanding, your forgiveness. Thank you. God, I ask you to bless every person of the sound of my voice, every family member connected to Archer's Road, everybody on the sick list, every church in the kingdom of God, every preacher that stands today. Give them mercy, God. We continue to tell people about you. Continue to love and let our right side that men may see our good works and give you the glory. Now, God bless you to remember Archer's Road United Church of Christ. Remember all under the sound of my voice, whatever they may be going through. God I ask you to continue to make a way out of the way. And we leave this place and never from your presence. God, we trust you today. And we walk by faith and not by sight. It's our original service. Give our body to your service. My prayer for y'all is this. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule and abide his for now and forevermore. If you believe that, put your hands together. Tell God, thank you. Give him a hand clap of praise. Thank you that you still are here. Thank you that he's back to life. Thank you for blessing you. Just thank the Lord for everything you have. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you.